Hey folks, this is Billy with Buchanan. I got another tutorial for you today on Autodesk Fusion 360. Today what we're going to be making is a simple six-sided dice. So here's the finished product. Let's start by making ourselves a new design and let's start by making just the basic square. So I'm going to select the bottom plane or the top plane, doesn't really matter which one you pick. And then I'm going to make myself a rectangle, except this rectangle, I want to do a center point rectangle so that I can use the origin as the center of my part. And I'm going to click and drag this out, and I could get it exactly where I want it to be, but I want this to be about 25 millimeters, or about 1 inch. So I'm just going to type in 25, and then hit tab, and then hit 25 to get the other size, and then hit enter, and that locks those in. Now I'm going to finish the sketch and extrude my part up 25 millimeters to give myself the cube. Okay, so usually die or dice uh, have a bit of a, a radius edge around the corner so that they aren't so sharp. This makes them easier to pick up and it makes them bounce a little bit better. So the next step is that I'm going to add a chamfer to all of the corners everywhere. I could do a fillet, which is a round over, but usually dice have like a 45 degree chamfer to them. So that's what we'll do. So let's start by just doing a chamfer and let's just do it on one edge to begin with. I'm going to do three millimeters and hit enter or OK. And so if I go to another one, let's say I do two here on the same corner and I do three millimeters, I end up with three chamfered edges that kind of end in a little point like this, which works. But if you think about dice, they don't usually have that little point there. Let me show you the other way of doing it here. If I chamfer all three edges at once, give it three millimeters, you see the difference? It's now got this little triangle shape there instead of this awkward kind of star shape. So when you actually print this with this awkward little star shape, that point actually ends up a little bit sharp. What we really want is for all of our sides to be like this. So the only way to make all of our sides like that is to go back a couple of steps and chamfer every single one of our edges all at once. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to delete that step and I'm going to delete that step and I'm going to delete that step. So this is the history down here. I'm just going into the old steps that I've done and I'm going to zoom back out so that I have my box with all of most of the edges visible. So now I'm going to try this all at once. I'm going to chamfer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you hold down shift and rotate around with that middle scroll wheel, there's 10, 11, 12. So you should have 12 edges and I'm going to give them each a radius of three millimeters and hit enter. There we go. So now they all have that little triangular shape on the side there. Next, I want to start putting in the numbers for the dice. So let's start with the easiest one. I'm going to go back up to the top view. Let's start with the easiest one. The easiest one is a 1. So I'm just going to do this by making a simple circle in the middle. I'm going to zoom in so that you see how my grid has got a little bit bigger. If you zoom out, the grid lines are 2 millimeters away. If you zoom in a little further, all of a sudden the grid lines are 1 millimeter away. So this is going to be handy later. Let's zoom in enough so that we see the grid lines 1 millimeter away. And I'm going to make a little circle, say 4 millimeters in diameter. So there's my circle there and finish that sketch. And then I'm just going to extrude this down. I can either click and drag to drag it down or I could type in minus one. So I'm just going to go with the one millimeter little hole in all of these, just enough to show that the shape is there, but not enough to remove material so that I'm really significantly altering the weight of the dice. Because the whole idea is that each side is supposed to have a, an equal probability of landing. Okay, so there we have our one. And I think I'm going to go in the second video to do all of the rest of the numbers because then we're going to have to start getting into pattern tools and whatnot. So I'm going to leave this one here. We'll see you in part two.